Hi, welcome back. Uh, we're going to complete uh, session 301, Discovery of Growth Track, in this uh, video uh, portion uh, here today. All right. Uh, so as we begin, you should have completed the personality assessment uh, that we did in the first part of this session. And then the last part of this session, we did the spiritual gifts assessment, uh, that long list of gifts to try and pull out uh, what your top spiritual gifts are that God has given you. Uh, we pick up here on page 13 in your handout entitled Passion Assessment. Okay, uh, we're going to use this to help you narrow down what you're passionate about to narrow down further from the assessments you've taken uh, where uh, your, your primary giftings lie. And so there are questions here, you can see them, uh, and just go through these, answer them, um, you know, as, as clearly and accurately as you can. Uh, most likely, your, the first answer that pops into your mind will be the best answer. Uh, and they're simple questions, really. The people question, who am I most interested in? Are there a group of people? Maybe it's young people. Maybe it's uh, people who are dealing with illness or uh, people dealing with other types of, of issues uh, that, that you're interested in. What, what group or subgroup of people am I interested in? The action question, what do I like to do the most? You know, what do I enjoy doing? What do I feel fulfilled in doing? Uh, the strengths question, in what area am I naturally strongest? What am I really good at? Okay. Uh, number four, the serving question. How can I help others solely for their benefit? A and that's key. It's not uh, just what I get out of it necessarily, but where can I really be useful, is another way to put it, in serving other people? Uh, the interest question. What God-honoring things interest me the most? What, what, peak my in what peaks my interest? In, uh, in, in terms of things that honor God. Number six, the opportunity question. What opportunities do I have before me? Where can I actually get busy? Where can I actually use uh, my, uh, my strengths and my, my, my gifts? Um, and then number seven, the nostalgia question. When in my life did I feel the most fulfilled? Look back over a period of your life and what was most fulfilling uh, to you that you were involved in. So uh, take some time, answer those questions, uh, and then this all fits together. I think you're going to see that. Then on page 14, putting it all together. Okay, here's where we combine uh, the, the concepts of personality and spiritual gifts. It says here at the top, what is my personality type and leadership style? And the first line there is from the DISC that we gave you on the first page of this 301 Discovery handout. What was the primary personality type? And then my leadership style, the second line there, am I more people or task oriented? And that usually corresponds to the, the DISC uh, personality type that we see is, um, is prominent in our lives. More people or task oriented. And then... The next question, what are two primary spiritual gifts or abilities I have? Of that top, um, we said three to five, what are two primary ones? Maybe the top two uh, that really I score strongest in. So you see we're, comp we're, we're um, putting together our spiritual, or excuse me, our personality types and our spiritual gifts. The next question says, based on the answers above, what is one step I can take to start finding fulfillment in these three areas? The first area is my family. Based on my personality, based on my spiritual gifts, um, what, can, what steps can I take to find fulfillment in my family, in my faith or my church? Churches uh, always have opportunities for uh, for people to serve, of course, and uh, that, that is so key to consider. And we're going to focus in on, in session four, we're going to focus in, in detail on specific areas where you can serve 
in Harvest Church. So what steps can I take to find fulfillment in the area of my faith church? And then number three, my field of opportunity, my job. Uh, we don't only serve in the church, but we, we serve wherever God gives us opportunity. So where is my opportunity? My job, for many of us, we spend so much time at work, uh, other places where we can be of, of service for the kingdom of God. So go through that sheet, answer those questions. And then as we move forward here, page 15, entitled The Next Steps. Uh, look at this scripture, Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. What are some next steps that we can do to really uh, narrow down how we can best be used of God? Number one, investigate your feelings. Your gift may tie in directly with your temperament and personality. God makes up our total being. Know your potential strengths and weaknesses. Number two, identify the opportunities. How do we do that? Look for needs. Look for needs. Based on your giftings, find out where you can, you can get, be useful. And then it says here, get busy. You know, people and, and people in the church, unfortunately, often, we, we talk a lot about doing this, I'd like to do this, I should do this. Uh, but where the rubber meets the road is when we actually get busy. So get busy. Do what you can. Don't worry about you may not do it perfectly. That's okay, especially in the church. The church is where we learn. All right? We don't have to do it perfectly before we can do it at all. We need to get busy. Number three, invest in and grow in your gifts. I talked before about learning about them. Study the Bible. Research other material on spiritual gifts. Study what the Word of God and, and supporting uh, studies say about those spiritual gifts. Get to know, I referenced this earlier, get to know people who are using similar spiritual gifts. People who are used in the gifts that you feel you have, you can offer for God's use. Get to know those people. Okay, talk to them. Uh, find out about their journey, about using that spiritual gift. And uh, letter D, share openly with others about the gifts you have, or you think you have, or you would like to have, okay? Make it a conversation piece. So, so really invest yourself in, and grow in your gifts. And then number four, inspect your results. Your spiritual gifts should work. Gifted people, it says, should uh, see results. If you have the gift of healing, or if you're used in that gift, uh, sick people should get well. I'm not saying 100% of the time necessarily we leave the results up to God, but uh, if, if that's your gift, uh, boy, it, there should be some results, okay? Number five, insist on feedback from the church leadership and church family. This is so important. Uh, we said in earlier sessions, God did not call us to be lone rangers. And this... Following this principle, number five, feedback from church leadership and church family, this keeps us humble. It keeps us from being arrogant about our gifts. Okay? Uh, it talks here about if you think you have a spiritual gift and try to exercise it, no one else around you in the church, the mature uh, spiritual people around you, they don't concur, they don't agree with that, you may not have it. You may have been mistaken. It needs to be confirmed. Your feelings are very important, but they're not infallible. Don't be afraid of feedback. Don't be afraid of input from experienced spiritual uh, people regarding your spiritual gift. Letter C, when members of the body confirm one another's gifts, more can be accomplished because everyone sees how they fit in and can work together. So insist on feedback from other people. That's that's, don't, don't see that as a threat. See that as a help and a confirmation to help keep you on track. Number six, invent a small group or join a ministry team. With the approval of the church leadership, form a small group. We talked about small groups before. Uh, join a ministry team. Okay? Uh, find a, a, a team or a group of people who are 
uh, doing something along the lines of what you feel like your spiritual gift is and get involved with them. Be part of a team. It's a great way to get our feet wet. It's a great way to learn. It's a great way to grow and develop our spiritual gifts. So, um, and then number seven, initiate the process today. How do I do that? Well, attend Growth Track 401, or in this case, attend it by, by means of video team. And that's what we're going to look at in the next uh, session. And then let her be commit to serve in a ministry for a season. You know, things change from time to time. We may not be able to do a ministry uh, our entire lives. And some people do, and it's great if you can. You find something and you are, are uh, uh, you know, plunged into that and do that the rest of your life. That's great. But it doesn't always work that way. And we can't always commit for the rest of our lives. But you can commit for a season, a year, a school year, nine months, uh, you know, a, 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 a season, the fall, winter, spring, or summer. Uh, a period of time. Commit for a season, okay, and, and get busy, initiate the process, say, hey, I want to be used of God. Uh, I, I want my spiritual gifts, my personality, everything he's poured into me. I want that to be used for the kingdom of God, for the purposes of God. And uh, I, I, I trust uh, that this discovery process uh, especially if you've never done it before, that, that uh, we've begun through this uh, session, 301 Discovery. Uh, I, I trust that this will just be the beginning of you discovering uh, how God created you and what he gifted you with and, and you using uh, those gifts for the glory of God and for his purpose. Uh, there's nothing, let me emphasize this, there's nothing more fulfilling than being used of God for his purpose. And I trust this has been helpful to you today. This is just the beginning. Stay on a path of discovery and learning and developing what God has poured into you. God bless you. We'll see you next time.